All right, we're back. Uh, time to look at what the papers are saying this morning. We have J.D. Johnson um, on standby. He's the senior lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Uh, J.D. Johnson, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning and good morning to uh, good morning to you, Messi and Kofi, and to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be to, to be with you for 24 hours to the election and um, 48 hours um, from now we'll be getting the result coming out from the election. It's a pleasure to be with you. Fantastic. Um, also, we can say congratulations to you, Jilly Johnson. Um, uh, some good news. Um, you cast your vote and the result was, was announced yesterday night. Uh, your wife, your wife, your wife is the INEC, um, you know, uh, chairman who brought out the results yesterday night. Congratulations on your bouncing new baby. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. I quite appreciate it. Yesterday, my wife gave back to a prince, and then um, hopefully, I, I hope we'll participate in the political process in the future, and he'll be a statesman and not a politician. Thank you very much. I quite appreciate this. Thank you. All right, then. Uh, let's look at the pages this morning, uh, the front pages to be very precise. I'd start off with the punch and let's see what the punch talks about. I mean, you can almost predict what the headlines will be. Pre-election violence, military orders begin raids on hoodlums and hideouts. Uh, four killed, 63 arrested, weapons recovered, thugs attack Kanu supporters. Uh, I would probably not have to take this, you know, for uh, the other rider, for the sake of not breaching the broadcasting code, so I'd leave that. But you can always, you know, look at these papers at your convenient time. Be peaceful, Biden urges Nigerians as we take to the polls tomorrow, and of course on the 11th of March, 2023. 87.2 million PVCs collected, Lagos, Kanu, and Kaduna top list. There's also an editorial as to Nigerians be bold, go out and vote. So there's an editorial to uh, casting your vote. I mean, just a day to that, or a few hours to that, if you like to say. How Finnish police grilled, release pro Biafran agitator uh, Simon Ekpa yesterday. Uh, it, it was topping the chart. Uh, it was a top trending conversation on different social media space. Federal government shortlist firms to audit NIPO's asset. And just before we move away from the punch now, you have Lagos Motor is grown over multiple uh, levers. That's the charges. I mean, sometimes if you, you are around these people, you really feel sorry for them because they have to pay uh, so much. But that's it this morning on the front page of The Punch. All right, let's take a look at uh, the other papers we have in front of us. And indeed, let's go to the Nation newspaper. Um, of course, uh, there's a big story there, uh, all eyes on the leading candidates. Uh, they're asking if uh, the others, uh, Kwan Kwa so will be can spin a surprise. Well, of course, um, uh, all the candidates are out for the elections. I think we have 18 of them. But the paper chooses to highlight uh, the two. Um, let's see if the results will mean that uh, it's not just a two-horse race, but you have the others. Um, I think Kwan Kwa So and Obi are being seen as outsiders in, in this in this poll. It's not, it's not partisan. We're not highlighting any, any party above the other, um, which is what NBC is talking about. Ogun, Agro Cargo Airport records maiden uh, flight. That's good news. Electoral process kicks off with hitches. Aina considers a shift of Enugu East territorial poll. Now we're beginning to see some of these things. Uh, why will be can't win uh, by 36 LP state chairman? All right, um, these are some of the stories you're trying to avoid. You know, to seem like we are highlighting some parties above the other. So we'll leave the analysis of that out uh, for now. Um, we have some more papers. The Daily Independent newspaper is another one we we'll look at this morning. It talks about the 2023 elections. It's already here. A few more hours and we will be uh, talking about that election. That's tomorrow. Concerns that will influence 87.2 million voters tomorrow. I like to stop Enugu East senatorial poll over killing of uh, a, pres I mean a candidate of a party. 
Buhari arrives in Casino ahead of tomorrow's presidential election. Nas polls. Uh, that's it. And then you find killing of our candidates and supporters in Enugu, barbaric and senseless. That's according to the uh, presidential flag bearer. And then you find cash crunch may short half of businesses or business informal uh, sector. Okay, the NEGSG is quoted to say, Nigeria leaves ban on charcoal processed wood export. I think that's also one mm. business that thrives. Uh, it's one business that thrives a lot. Well, it's, it's good to see that that has been lifted. Narrow swap policy, federal government may slam treason charges on opposing government, Malami is saying, and the bongs, uh, the breach of Supreme Court order on the Naira policy. Military apprehends mastermind of Kaduna Abuja train attack, just as, you know, services, uh, that service has been suspended for tomorrow up until the election's over. That will be on Sunday. But that's it this morning on the Daily Independent. Well, Daily Trust leads to the story, um, of course, on the elections analysis as well. Um, um, this is talking about 24 hours to go. How will the candidates fare? Article Tinubu will be quite quite so how would they share 87 million votes? I think I've seen some very interesting analysis, very interesting indeed. And we'll see more of that today and tomorrow while the voting is going on, analyzing you know how the, the vote may go. Um, they're saying the riders to that is too close to call, according to experts, uh, former VP, um, and uh, of course, Ashiwaju for epic battle popularity test for former Anambra governor. All right, so uh, we'll leave it at that because of time. We'll go over to our guest, uh, Judy Johnson. It's um, being put out by the papers to be uh, a couple of them to be maybe a two horse race. Some are putting it to be a three horse race and four horse race. Um, uh, Judy Johnson, go, what, what, what's your analysis um, of, of the voting tomorrow? We don't want you to mention political candidates or uh, political parties, but do you think it's a two horse race? Between the two parties that have um, mm -hmm. have been, you know, the the leading parties before now. No, it's not a two horse race because the other candidates, there are two other candidates whose performance will determine the eventual winner. They might not win, but don't rule out will be as as a dark horse. The two, um, sorry, please don't be, don't don't um, take rule out the Labour Party candidate. As, as a dark horse, but the usual, the usual suspect, PDP and APC, will play a major role as the leading, as the leading parties. However, um, the, the performance of the Labour Party, the performance of NNPP, will eventually uh, help in determining the outcome of that election. And then in major elections, you might not rule out a dark horse. That's how it was said in 2016 that it was not possible for Donald Trump to win the presidency, but eventually won. However, the case of Nigeria is, is, is different. Uh, we have a lot of fault lines. This election has taken so many dimensions. There's ethnic dimension to it. There's religious dimension to it. And with the exception of one of two of the candidates, appeal, have been, appeal has been made to the fault lines that separate us, the Primoda sentiments that that divide us that we thought could be our, our diversity that could be our unity in strength has been one of the things that the political class has appealed to if if voting pattern is done along the lines which the candidates have campaigned and definitely it will be a two us race but if indeed nigerians have gone above the beyond primordial sentiments and we are waiting for a new nigerian i, I can assure you that it's not a two us race it will be a three us with respect to that to respect to that election and like every pundit and like every poll you have seen is 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 too close to call just like we had this is the first time since 1999 that we'll be having more than two major parties and that was the experience we had in 1979 in 1979 we had five political parties or two major parties three major parties were, were the actors and the players and these three major parties fell along um, um, these four lines that, that divided us. You have the national, the NPN, the UPN, and the NN, N, NPP. So, and you could see the outcome of that of that result, how a close contest it is. And then the case went to Supreme Court for the Supreme Court to decide on 12 to 12. 
And there's a every likelihood that we, we might have a situation whereby the Supreme Court might need to intervene. But you have a situation whereby you have the actors and the players in the present political space, even at the state and local government level, and at the national level, not having respect for the court proceeding. I hope whatever is the outcome of this election, and this, if there is any need to go to the Supreme Court, the decision of the Supreme Court will be the supreme um, order of, of the day. But it's, it's going to be a close, a close contest. And I can also assure you that um, the, the opportunity and the ability of governors to deliver their state, the opportunity and the ability of people to manipulate the process, the ability of the political class to circumvent the will of the people is limited with the with the with the use of the biva, the bivas and bivas, bivas technology. If that is fully deployed, if that is fully deployed, if that is fully deployed to the length and breadth of Nigeria, if there is no contrary instruction from INEC that okay, you know what, we don't we can use it. You recall in 2015, there was the card reader, the card reader was used. Uh, the card that was used down south was not completely complied with in the north. Same thing in 2019. So if we have a complete and if we have a complete adherence to that, I can assure you that the winner of that election will not get more than 12, 12, 10, 12 million votes. 10, 12 million votes. Mm. Um, let's look at the punch now. I, I'd like you to react to uh, the the fact that the military has been deployed uh, to secure and ensure that, you know, the territorial integrity of the nation also being involved in civil uh, activities or policing of uh, civil society. Have, Messi, uh, you know I've said it. Messi, the military has no business being seen. Now, what the military is doing should be done by the police. Our democratic institutions have been militarized. And you see, you see elections being conducted in other countries. Do you see their military coming out the way they come out in full force? It's like it's a siege mentality, I can assure you. It's a, an average person will be scared of going out to vote. I, I, was, I was just with a friend. I said, that, you see, with this military out, you know what an average parent will tell you? Or, or, or what? Please, don't go out to vote. Too. And if you go out to vote, don't for many trouble. Do we have to wait till the election is coming before we reap the society of hoodlums? <coughs> I've told you, and I've said it many times, we know where the hoodlums are. We know the flashpoints in Lagos, in every part of this country. Now, that in the forefront of all of this, in ensuring the critical infrastructure of our democracy, it is not the military, but the police. All of the resources the army is bringing to ensure election and what they should use to defend the territory. I saw the, 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 the deployment of, 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 of the military, particularly in Lagos, the one I saw as in Lagos, and, and the kind of equipment they are, they are bringing on the one that they had on, on, the, on the Long Bridge in Beka. I was wondering, probably they need this type of equipment in, in Bornu. We need this type of equipment to protect to protect the Lagos uh, Abuja Cardinal Rail Line. We need that type of equipment to protect all the forests where you have these bandits. But they are nowhere to be found. You don't have to militarize democracy. And I've said it. It's clear. Johnson, it's but, clear. Johnson, but there are times where, I mean, do, do you think that it's wrong? Because there are times where it's expected that, you know, the military is invited or soldiers are invited to aid and act as civil authority to play the role of the police. See, and so, in, don't, don't you in, think that... In, in, I, I'd like to ask you, G Johnson, please, just before you come in now, don't you think that yeah. we're at that time where the military or the soldiers are invited to play the role of the police or aid the police in policing and ensuring that law and order is maintained, especially, you know, with the rampage that's going on following the Naira scarcity? Okay, are the military trained to maintain civil order? Are they trained to maintain civil order? An exception no, is made. I'm, I'm saying that, is there no yeah, exception? No, no, I'm, just, I'm giving you a rhetorical question. Now, where you have such situation whereby you bring in the military into maintaining order, you, you know what they are called in the United States? They are called the National Guard. 
They are called the National Guard. They don't bring out the kind of equipment you see that then they bring out. You don't see them with guns, like you see them. Now, if you see them with guns, then the governor of the state must have approved. The governor of the state must have approved the deployment of military guards before they are the, the National Guard before they are deployed. The president or the commander in chief cannot just, for example, Joe Biden cannot deploy, cannot deploy, cannot deploy the, 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 the army to Ohio, where they had this this derailment. He has to he has to get an approval from the governor of Ohio, Bobby Devine, for him to deploy that. You see, as far as I am concerned, we must have developed our policing, the civil authority for maintaining law and order to a certain extent. If after 24 years of democracy, we have not been able to develop the Nigerian police to the point that the Nigerian police can protect the critical infrastructure of election, then something is wrong with our security arrangement. And there's something is a major concern for those for those that will be elected, is a major issue that they need to address. I have nothing against the military, but I can tell you that when you see too much military, it creates fear. And in democracy, election is not meant to create fear. Election is meant to be is meant to be a carnival for people to understand, for people to understand that there's an opportunity for them to excite their franchise, there's an opportunity for them to give their mandate to whoever they want to rule them, to govern their affairs for the next four years. But as far as you see the military, it creates a mobile fear, I can assure you. It creates a mobile fear. You see, in the past, when we see military like this, Johnson, can you hear us? G.D. Johnson, can you hear me? You, you would think, think that the, there's a coup. That, that's the that is mindset. You think that there's a coup. All right. But uh, one would begin to wonder uh, what becomes of a situation where you have a lot of unrest. And at a time where you have talked about the police not being developed, because uh, if you look at it, some people say that the police have lost their professionalism. And, and that's the reason why uh, falling back on the soldiers or the military seem to be an alternative. So in a case where uh, there's a lot, I mean, for instance, there's one that happened just around our vicinity following the narrow redesigned policy and scarcity. Some elements, you know, took to the streets and they were going to vandalize, but not for the swift intervention of the military. Uh, of this, uh, you know, soldiers, and right. that was quelled, and the properties were protected, apparently lives as well. So uh, I'm saying in, in situations where it, it's out of hand, would it still be, you know, wrong to say you have the presence of the military? What is the security brief for the Naira design? Did the CBN involve the National Security Advisor in the Naira design? Did they look at the in policy implication? The the, the, the the political implication, the social implication, the environmental implication, and then the security implications of the poly, of, of the new Naira design. You are saying it that uh, if, if if that has been taken into consideration, you'll have factored that in. It won't come as a surprise to 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 to, to, to us, to the policymakers, to those that we have given responsibility to manage the affairs of the state, if that has been taken into consideration, that if we take this decision. What are the implications of this decision? To every action, there is a reaction. What would be the reaction of the people? Was there enough sensitization with respect to letting people understand that this is the direction of the policy? We will not give you more than 5,000 naira. You can only do electronic transaction from that. But, you know, we have different kind of instructions, directive. Okay, we will give you 10,000. We'll collect 20,000 from the counter. There's nobody that has collected 20,000 from the counter. I'll give you an example. A, 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 a junior colleague of mine went to the bank yesterday and they were paying them for 4,000 naira. And then he got to his turn. It was no wonder number 57. Owner number 57, when he was getting to his turn, the, 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 they were paying them across the counter. The money has finished. So are you telling me that the whole branch of the bank will not have 1 million, will not have 1 million naira? Because 100 times 400 times 400 is 400,000. So the money they've shared is not even up to 500,000. And the whole bank will power their gen, we bring in their staff, and then they will be giving 4,000. Mercy, a lot of thoughtful considerations were not given into this policy. I can assure you on this. 
with respect to the security implication. Because if the, look, on, 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 on Monday, you knew what happened in Shagam. Shagam is usually a flashpoint. You know what happened in Shagam? Banks were set ablaze in Shagam. And at the end of the day, because the people are not properly educated, they are the ones that will suffer the problem. So, I mean, we're talking yeah, about the involvement. Because... Johnson, you know, we're talking about the involvement of the military in uh, civil affairs. I mean, and maintaining law and order in a civil dispensation or a civil state. That's what, I'm saying. Uh, that's what we're talking about. We're saying that it's wrong to involve the military because the military was not created for that. But I'm saying that in cases like this where you have rightly stated that our police, as we have a police system that's underdeveloped and some people are saying that the police have become too friendly and they have lost their professionalism. And so what else do we now do? Do we fold the arms and just wait for, you know, cures to happen? I'm just saying, what would you prefer as a solution if we constantly say we can't use the military in times where we have, um, you know, cases that are out of hand, where the police is overwhelmed. What I'm saying in effect is that I'm not saying you can't use the military. What I'm saying in effect, if you are going to use the military, have a special unit of the military properly trained and properly equipped to do that purpose. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If you are going to have the military to do that, in America, they bring in the National Guard to do that, to quell when there was unrest in 2020, you saw the National Guard. The National Guard was deployed. When there was across America, if you want to do that, have a special unit of the military properly trained and equipped for that purpose. That's what I'm saying. You must train the military on how to curtail civil disobedience. That's, that's my argument. OK. Um, I mean, still looking at that, I'd like you to also share your thoughts on uh Another one, uh, we have yesterday, INEC had put out, you know, data and reports as to the number of PVCs that have been collected, 87,209,707. And seven, like 100. Uh, what are your thoughts? Are you quite impressed uh, looking at the figures from last year? Well, Total I'm number of... In that figure. What, what, what? What I'm interested in actually is the, vote, is the voters' turnout. When you have large voters' turnout, you have a situation whereby it's very difficult to rig the election because it's very difficult to manipulate the will of the people. And they will say the voice of the people is the voice of God. So for me, what I'll be looking at is the actual people that turn out to vote in that election. You recall in 2019, the president got less than 15 million votes, uh, got less than 16 million votes. Same in 2015. In actual sense, the vote that the elected president in 2019 got was less than the vote he got in 2015. The margin was 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 was, was low compared to even the voters' turnout was also low. If you look at the percentage of the actual people that turned out to vote in 2015 and in 2019, you'll be I'll, you'll be shocked to know that the percentage of those that turned out to vote in 2015 were more than those that turned out to vote in 2019, despite the fact that. There's an increase, there's an exponential increase in the number of people that register to vote. There's one thing for people to register to vote. I want to appeal to all Nigerians that are watching, go out tomorrow and exercise your mandate. As long as you comport within the law, you have no fear of your nose being blooded, as said by the chief of army staff. You, as long as you live within the frame of what the law allows you to do, I can assure you that you are safe. Go out, cast your vote. Let us express our mandate and let us ensure that the popular will, not the minority will. How can in a, in a, in a, in 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 eighty eight last time we had eighty eight plus million people registered to vote, and the person that won the election had fifteen million plus. That's not government of the majority. That's government of the minority. It's government of the minority. In fact, if you total the number of 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 of, of those that that means that. The people that did not vote, that did not support the president, are more than the people that actually voted for him. Because staying at home means that people are undecided. It means that a lot of people are uninterested in democratic process. That's the implication. If you analyze it from attitude, from attitude and point of view, it means that they are undecided. They are not interested in the political process. And if you have a democratic process where majority of the people are not interested in participating, there's something wrong with your with your polity, and there's need for you
to look at what do we need to do? Do we need a lot of voters' education? Do we need to increase the people's trust in the democratic process? Do we need to provide enabling environment that will allow people to go and cast their vote? Do we ensure that there's no rigging and people believe that my vote really matters? Because if people think that their vote does not really matter, why should they go out to vote? All right, if people think that they will not feel safe, why should they go out to vote? Now, some of this military exercise that we are seeing from this to the election, probably we should have done this three months to the election. We begin to comb the society and begin to send the signal and then people have confidence and trust in the process. And the citizenry and the voters will get used to having the military to be part and parcel of the civil society and then you can go and vote on the day of the election. But, but I mean, that, would, that might just be one factor because I know that a lot of persons uh, speaking to a couple of them on the streets, uh, some people... Uh, who would probably want to vote would have moved from one you know, state to another, one constituency to another. And the process of trying to get the PVC, a lot of people don't have the information as to transferring from a particular state or constituency or polling unit to another one. That's on the one side. The fact that information, a lot of people are not in the know that they can do that. In other cases, some people have lost their PVC. So I think that the factors for non-involvement in the election or the number of turnout will be dependent on different issues. So you would have those who are afraid to come out. You also have those who don't believe in the system. You have those who uh, have not been able to get the right information to have their cards transferred from one polling unit or constituency or one state to another. And so the issues cannot just be limited to one, but I think that it's encompassing. And uh, I'd like to be hopeful that we will eventually get there. Same here. So we are, we are hopeful that we we'll get there, but it's a process. And the process is not just one week to the election. It's just not two weeks to the election. It's not three weeks to the election. We knew after tomorrow, the next election, we, we happened we, we happen, um, happen in the next four years. Um, we happen in the next four years, so we should start planning towards that election right away. Voter sensitization, creating an environment, Reading the environment of, of, of hoodlums. We know where the hoodlums are. If there was a particular story which you talk about motorists grooming over the type of levies that are imposed on them in Lagos. And those are the things that we need to look into. Those are the issues that need to be addressed. If you enter public transport, you see them lining the streets of Lagos, and you begin to wonder whether they are a government to themselves, or they are a law and order to themselves, or whether they are operating in a different society, whether they are above the law, and you see the police turning blind eye. You see blast man turning blind eye and everybody turning blind eye to them and they become an institution within the institutions of the state. All right. Uh, Jerry Johnson, interesting analysis from you. Um, uh, uh, the day is almost upon us and uh, we'll see what uh, happens at the end of the day. Lots of predictions, even prophecies um, regarding uh, the election. Um, I mean, one of the funny aspects was um, people trying to prove to, to the rest of us that their preferred candidate had their name in the Bible. You know, I never knew uh, there's a particular name. I never knew. It starts with a B. I never knew that name was in the Bible until... Um, <laughs> oh, to all the leading um, candidates. Until, COVID, <laughs> it's what I showed me COVID, that it was in the Bible. <laughs> COVID, when the prophet made that, when the prophet made that prophecy, I told them, that uh, when the prophet made the prophecy concerning the labor candidate, I said, wow, these people probably did not read the Bible. They will know that there is the name of the APC candidate in the Bible. It's I, I saw it. I was, I was surprised. I saw LXX. I knew that I have the privilege of reading the Bible from the beginning to the end at least one or two times. So I, 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 I have seen that. So I was just laughing. When the renowned pastor was saying that, I said, this guy is just a master of double speak. You know, this prophet a master of double speak. But, but, and I tell you this with this prophecy <laughs> concerning politics. I'll tell you my harrowing experience as a kid in 1979. In 1979, my father took us to a church. And we went to his friend's church. They were having the harvest. And then he was proud to 1979 election. And the woman, you know, he went in trance. And when they go in trance, they will not do anything. So we were in church from 10 a.m. to 4, 4 p.m. You can't go out. You will not go and eat. And then as a kid, I couldn't go out. I was just 10 years old. I couldn't go out to it. And this woman went into the prophecy. He said, oh, if they like, I, if they don't like, whether they like it or not, I will always be the president. And he said, she said that even if people refuse to vote for Aulawa, the grass and the apps 
and the sound of Nigeria we bought. I'm telling you a true life story. So as a young kid, I went to buy the newspaper to see the result. In fact, that is what ignited my interest okay. in practicing journalism. All right. I went and bought the newspaper to see the outcome of this prophecy. And I can tell you, you can ask people around me. Since that time, if you are around me and you come up with any stupid prophecy, I'll tell you that. You are talking black and ash. No matter how anointed you are, I'll just tell you. You are, you are just, it's your figment of your imagination. You could see how disappointed I would be as a kid then, 10 years old, when the woman made the prophecy that I will all win the election. And I went and I. And, Kofi, to tell you the truth, when people argue that I will actually won the election in 1979, I'm a Yoruba person. Because that. It said, ignited my growth. I was interested. There were five elections in five weeks. Five elections in five weeks. And in all of the elections in those five weeks, MPN won. MPN had more local government than UPN. Uh, MPN had more House of Assembly than UPN. MPN had more state governors than UPN. MPN had House of Rep more than UPN. MPN had more senators than UPN. In the school of logic, and extrapolation of statistics. Mm. There's no way okay. UPN could have won that election. We, ha we have so to go. We, ha we have to go, Jiri. But I'm sure you also remember the talk of um, uh, the Bible. Um, I what was name being the Bible. Uh, that prophecy yeah, then also. And uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And Jeremiah. someone says Jeremiah. Shagari's name is also Jeremiah. in the Bible. Yes, Shagari. Jiri, we have to go now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so <laughs> much. Uh, we, we really have to go. have to go. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> well, I like the result. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> You know, they say Shagari's name. Much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. They say Shagari's name was also in the Bible as well. And uh, the name they took to, to, to make that fact was quite funny. But we'll have to take a break when we come back and we'll look at the role of youth, the youth uh, vote in the 2023 election. Stay with us.